Hello and welcome back to the free online woodworking school. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use a plane to taper the legs on this shaker table. So these legs are currently 30 millimeters square and we need to keep them that size at the top and taper them down to 20 millimeters square at the bottom. That way, when you look at it, it's gonna have parallel sides, but the inside will be kind of lightened by the look of those tapers. And yeah, it's just a really nice way to add a bit of elegance to a table like this, because it looks kind of blocky at the moment. Now, of course, there are all sorts of ways to cut tapers on legs like this. In this video, we're primarily gonna focus on the hand tool method because no matter which method you use, whether it's a table saw, tapering jig, or just eyeballing it on the bandsaw, you're gonna need to refine it with a plane towards the end just to get the taper looking straight, smooth, and accurate. And so the techniques taught in this video should be universally applicable, I think. So before I take this table apart to work on the components, the first thing I wanna do is mark the remaining material on the bottom of these legs to ensure that we don't accidentally taper the wrong faces. This has only gotta be rough, but we're removing material from the inside faces and we're taking it down to 20 millimeters square. So all you've got to do is draw an approximate 20 millimeter square from the outside corner of each of the legs. And then when we use a marking gauge later to give us a more accurate place to cut back to, we've got these lines to kind of sanity check against. So that's all we're looking to do at this point, just getting some squares drawn from the outside corners. So what we're gonna do here is set a marking gauge to 20 millimeters, and then we're gonna reference this marking gauge from the face side and the face edge of each leg. Remember, those are the outside faces of the legs. And so if we do that from the face side and the face edge, that is gonna leave us a 20 millimeter square on the end of the leg that's gonna be consistent across all four of them. And you can see that my original lines I drew were not accurate whatsoever, but they do act as a nice kind of sanity check. So we'll just scribe along there, scribe along there, just redefine that area that we're gonna be removing. And you can confirm things again by just looking down that waste of material should be on the same face as whatever joinery you've got going on. So with the squares marked out on the bottom, next we're going to draw the start point of the taper. So you should still have the lines left over from where we were marking out the boundaries of these joints. We're actually gonna start the taper 10 millimeters down from that. Because if you start the taper on it and you accidentally plane a bit too far, then you're gonna end up sort of undercutting the shoulder of this joint and you'll end up with a little gap at the bottom. So just leaving a small flat spot below is it's really not that noticeable. And you can sort of blend it in with sandpaper afterwards if you want. But I personally wouldn't worry about it too much. So what I'll do, instead of marking 10 millimeters down from that line, I'll just look at the overall distance from the top. Just mark, in this case, it's 110. So flip them round as needed. And then one by one, just square these across. And then what you should be able to do here is get the square mark on the end grain. Just give yourself a little mark on the face so you can sort of see where that square intersects with it. And then you can join the square line that we've just created up here with that little tick on the bottom, and that should give you your taper. Now there is only so much accuracy you can get with this line. A lot of it, we're actually just gonna rely on the plane to get straight, but this can just be a sort of guideline to make sure that you're removing the right bit. So we'll just mark the waist. So this is being drawn on the face side of the leg because there's no point drawing this taper on this face because we're gonna be planing this away. And so we'll end up losing our markings. So drawing it on the face, we've also got one to do on the other face side. I've already got the markings on here. So then we've got a taper that starts from nothing, going all the way up to match the square end that we did previously. So it's nice and clear what we need to remove. So I just thought I'd say this now. You might notice from here on that this timber has a little bit of a bow in it. You might have noticed already. This is purely down to my own impatience. I was sold this timber from the sawmill knowing it was wet, but I just wanted to go ahead and film this series because I knew this was kind of a prototype. I know it's blasphemy saying that I'm making a prototype in walnut, but <laughs> it's the board was huge. And so as a result, it has distorted in some places. There's a few bends and all that, and it's going to make planing these tapers a little bit tricky. And so use this as a lesson for when you're making this project. Make sure your timber's nice and dry and make sure you're storing it correctly as well. Because having legs that sort of go off in weird bends and things is really, it's not really a lot you can do about it. You just gotta make sure that they're nice and dry before using them. This is also the reason I'm marking them out with a pencil as opposed to a knife. However, this one's pretty straight, so I'll demonstrate that now. 
A knife line can be much easier to plane back to because it's both more precise and because it's just much easier to see when you've worked down to an actual cut in the wood rather than just something drawn on the surface. So when marking this out with a knife, firstly, I would recommend clamping the ruler down to the leg. Make sure to get it as precise as possible. So this is gonna be quite difficult to remove otherwise. And then when you mark this line out, think about the grain direction. In this case, if I'm going from top to bottom, the knife can very easily veer off course from the ruler and go into this sort of waste section, which isn't a huge issue because it is waste, but it might make it tricky to make a kind of straight line. Whereas if I come from this direction, even if the knife wants to follow the grain and kind of veer off course, it's got the ruler as a backstop. So it's gonna be much easier to knife from this side, doing very light passes to begin with, just to kind of get the line established and then do a slightly heavier one on the successive passes. But without exception, always remember to mark your waist. And so you can imagine that that knife line on the right is gonna be far easier to work back to. You've just gotta be very careful about where you place it and make sure to clamp down the ruler securely. No chance. <laughs> so I'm just doing a visual check that if I look at the show faces, the face side and the face edge, I can see both tapers. So that proves that I've done it on the correct faces. Always worth double checking these things. You know, it's not to say you can't taper the outsides of legs. Design is design. You can call it whatever you want, but for the most part, this is kind of how it was traditionally done with these kinds of tables. So when planing these legs, you want to make sure that you've got support from underneath. We don't want to be clamping them in a vise like this or a quick release vise, whatever you have, because the wood is going to be unsupported on either side. And it might be okay to start with, but by the time we start thinning out the bottom of this leg, there's chances for that to flex and we're not going to get an accurate taper. So we want to make sure it's supported. And I'm very fortunate in that I've got this absolute beauty of a bench and she's got a tail vise on her or, or a wagon vise as it's normally called. And so I've got a bench dog up here. I can also pop this one up, butt the leg against it and then tighten this up from behind. And this is now held securely down to my bench with support from underneath. That is something that doesn't come as standard with a lot of benches. And so for the majority of people, you're going to be looking for some sort of retrofit. And the way you do that is with one of these. This is called a Wonder Pup and it's made by Veritas. There is also a Wonder Dog that has a longer stem on it for thicker workbenches, but you'll see this works perfectly fine on this bench and it's five inches thick. So all you've got to do is drill a row of holes in your workbench, three quarter inch in diameter. You put a dog in one of them to butt the leg against and then you put the Wonder Pup. This is the easiest way of adjusting it. Just spin it like that. Put the Wonder Pup in one and then you simply tighten it against the underside of the leg. Cinch it around a little bit. This handle's got like a pivot on it so you can spin it around to 90 degrees to get a bit more torque, but you don't really need that much. And that will hold your leg in position with full support from underneath without needing to fit any fancy mechanisms in whatever workbench you've got. All you need is a row of three quarter inch holes, which for those of us using metric is 19 millimeters. And as you can see, you're off to the races. The only downside to this kind of thing is the thickness of that block on the end. You can see that we'll just about get away with it in this case, but if we were going down any thinner, there's a chance you could potentially hit the top of the dog with the plane. In this case, of course, we could just spin it round and have the thicker end next to the wonder dog and have the thinner end that we're gonna be tapering next to the dog with the adjustable height. But yeah, if you're working with anything below, I would say 15 millimeters, but you tend to hit this stem more often. Below about 22 millimeters, you're at chance of hitting this. So that's where the limitation of this setup can be. But for a job like this, it will be more than capable. So yeah, I'll pop a link to it in the description. This is what I used for years before building this workbench and I was still working on this horrible thing back here. And there's no kind of capability of putting a tail vise or a wagon vise on this. Now, the number one mistake when planing tapers is this. Think about it. We've got a taper that we're gonna plane down. How many shavings need to be removed from up here and how many shavings need to be removed from down here in order to get to the line? The answer is of course, one up here and then it's, let's say a hundred for example. And so the last thing you want to be doing is starting your plane up here when doing this taper. Because if you start there, you're kind of already done. And then you've got no kind of 
ability to refine the line or do a final smoothing pass because by the time you have and you do that second smoothing pass you've gone below the line. I know this seems like quite pedantic but for people who start their planes up here it's never just two shavings they take it'll always be like 20 or something because you'll have so much refining on that line to do. What I'm saying is the best thing to do here is start your plane on the bottom and just literally do five millimeter passes then 10 millimeter passes then 20, then 30, then 50, maybe not that small increments, but basically start small and then gradually increase the size of the shaving you're removing. And naturally you'll start creating a taper that stays parallel to the line that we're hoping to plane down to. And so by the time you get up here, all you've got to do is two or three passes that should simultaneously take you down to the line on the face and also do the final pass up to the line that we've drawn on here. That's all very theoretical or very pedantic, but Think about it as you're doing this. Try and avoid this area until the very last pass if you can. And that's what's gonna give you a really straight and accurate taper. So when doing this, I'd recommend having a plane to kind of rough out the taper to begin with. Get that done on all of the legs, then go and resharpen the blade, set it to a finer cut and do the final few passes. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do it with two planes. I've got this one set up as a roughing one, this one set up for my final smoothing. So like I said earlier, we're gonna start right down the bottom here and just do a few short shavings and all we're looking at doing here is creating a taper that matches the angle of that line below and in fact we're already pretty much there so this is a really good start you see how that waste material is pretty parallel right up until this kind of point where that taper that i'm planing ends and we work flat that's where the taper kind of starts disappearing again we basically just want to continue what we're doing here all the way up to work down to that line parallel so that that final pass is nice and easy the other thing you want to be doing here is making sure you're always checking for square but make sure that you're always doing it from the face side let me explain why this is so important so this is the face that we're tapering and we've got the face side is on this side and the inside face is here. So this inside face is also going to be tapered as well. Because remember, these legs have tapers on both the inside faces. So if we check this taper for square using the face edge, then I can see that it's pretty bang on all the way over. Not bad for roughing it out. And at the moment, I can also do the same from the inside face because I haven't yet planed a taper on this. But what happens when you plane a taper on this is it slightly skews the square. And when this kind of, I guess it's a second plane or a second axis the engineers watching this will tell me what happens is when this happens it effectively causes you to get a misreading from the square like in this case it's now touching at this end and is opening a gap this side whereas if i tilt it the other way it's opening a gap at this end and it's now touching down the bottom and so if you don't cotton onto this early, what you're going to find is you'll be chasing your tail constantly when planing these tapers. You'll be planing it, you'll measure it for square and it will look perfect. You'll plane it a bit more. And then next time you check it, you'll accidentally do it on that second face that you tapered and see that you've got a huge gap. So then you'll be like, oh, I'll plane down that side in order to get it square. And then sure enough, when you go and check it again, you check it on the side that it should have been checked square from and you've got a gap again, even though you just fixed it. This kind of mismeasurement is the perfect storm for creating a taper that goes too far and you end up with really spindly sticky legs on the thing and so when you're checking for square always make sure you're doing so from the show faces or the faces that aren't going to be tapered because they're the ones that will always be square to the taper that you're measuring whereas if you're measuring sort of taper to taper that angle you're measuring is never going to be sort of truly representative of what's actually going on so that aside i'm gonna keep working down this leg you see I'm doing longer shavings now. I can see that I'm approaching the line slightly quicker here than I am down here. So I'll just do a few short shavings again to kind of even that out, gradually elongate them, check again, and we're looking parallel. Before getting too carried away, take it out and check for square. Looking good still. So again, just checking, I can see that there's still more waste down here than there is up here. So just gonna give this a bit more love in. Elongate the shavings once I've done so. Check the progress and it's looking even again. So we'll continue with full length shavings. And we are so nearly there now. So you can see we're just like a few millimeters away from the line. And as we work our way back, you can see where the planes 
sort of starting and where we need to finish up on that sort of line about here. And so using this method that I've just showed you, what it's allowed me to do is now switch to my fine plane and just do a few smoothing passes to get down to that line and it's simultaneously going to hit this one. I might need to do a few kind of extra shavings here or up here in order to make it work, but I can guarantee you that final pass, as long as I'm being careful, should allow me to hit that line and the one down the length all in one hit. Before we do that, I'm just going to do one last check for square. Okay, we're looking slightly higher on this side. So I'll just bear that in mind as I'm doing these final smoothing passes. Because I've got a subtle camber on this blade, if I locate it over this edge, it's going to take a heavier shaving here than it is on the, whatever that side is for you, the left. So we'll just do a few kind of bias to that side. Check it, spot on. You can hear it scraping across the whole length. That's what we like. So now we are going to go for the final pass. So yeah, it looks pretty consistent all the way down. So I'm happy to just continue with this. One thing I haven't said yet is that you should always plane down leg tapers like this, because if you're planing up, then you're going to be working against the grain, at least in the majority of cases. If it's tearing out doing it in this direction, then obviously try it the other way. So I'm doing these nice and controlled. And I think I've probably got just a couple of extra ones to do up here. I'm not quite at the line yet, so I'm just going to remove a bit there first. Yeah, and maybe just a few more in the middle. Now, full length passes again. And again, just another pit stop to show that theory I was explaining earlier in practice. So up here, we still haven't touched that line. Remember I said it's only one pass you need on that and we need about 100 or so down here. We're definitely approaching probably 90 down here. And up here, we still haven't touched it. So just doing long passes should allow us to sort of hit our number at either side. It's got to be slow and steady and have a really nice, sharp, well set up plane. So we're pretty much, oh, we're like bisecting the line all the way down. We are bang on the money at the moment. I think that is it. So you might just about be able to see remnants of the white line along the top edge. But then if we work our way up, you can see the kind of glistening finish from the plane and how that stops bang on that line that I've drawn there. Oh, and I've just noticed this as well. This is a really good indication that you're down to the right thickness. This white line you see down the end was the original marking gauge line that was scratched along this face. What you're seeing there is the compressed fibers of one of the walls of the blade that the marking gauge kind of scored into the timber. Like that is just all compressed timber along there. And it shows that we were bang on that line. That is how you plane tapers accurately by hand. And by the way, I kind of glossed over the whole cambered plane thing. If you're not sure what I mean by having a cambered blade in a plane and how to sharpen it and how to set it up, I've done a whole series on tutorials on doing so. So there'll be a link to those in the top corner as well as the description, because honestly, having a cambered blade is essential for fine tuning the squareness of a length of timber like this. And so with all that said and done, let's start working on the taper that is perpendicular to the one that I've just done. Now it is really essential to always measure for square from the face edge. Never do so from this one that I've just tapered or from the one that you've just tapered. I'm not doing it for you. Got some pretty funky stuff happening with the grain on this leg. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so here we go. I think I found an exception to the planing down the leg rule. You can see we've got some horrible tear out going on and that is no surprise given what I'm seeing on the side grain here. You can see that as the leg tapers down, there's still fibers that are traveling up towards that edge. And so as I plane from this direction, take this light stripe, for example, the plane blade is basically getting under that and then levering it up. Whereas if I were to plane from this direction, again, focusing on that light stripe, all it's going to be doing is compressing it down as I take the kind of top of the fiber off, which is what planing is. So most of the time you won't get away with this, but in certain circumstances, well, let's see first before I make a judgment on it. <laughs> you can hear it, it's just planing beautifully. Most of the time you can't do this. You can't plane uphill without getting some sort of tear out. 
but the grain on this leg is telling me to do so. I'm doing it and I am getting some amazing shavings from it. All right, there we go. That is how you plane leg tapers by hand. So just to kind of summarize everything we've gone through in this video. Firstly, think about where the majority of the shavings need to be taken. Think about where the least amount needs to be taken. That is what's gonna create your taper. Focus primarily on the end first and then gradually increase those shavings until you start approaching the top. You might need to sort of adjust it here and there, maybe do a few extra down here and a few extra in the middle just to keep that line parallel as it descends. But the main thing you're looking for is for your plane to hit the line here and down the bottom at the same time or thereabouts, but ideally at the same time. And remember that if you don't have a bench that has a wagon vice or any kind of work holding means that allows you to hold something down to the bench without restricting access to the top, have a look for the, one of these Veritas Wonder Pups. You could get the Wonder Dog if you want, but the Wonder Pup does me just fine. So, as always, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one, because I think we're going to be gluing this up.